Oh my good grief. Happens above. Just seems to cut down on arguments, my darling. Well, well no, and the other thing, yes, well, no. It, yes. Is it a relationship saver? Sometimes Captain's not always right. Hi, we're Jackie and Michael and we're exploring the rivers and canals of Britain on our 57 foot narrowboat Border Riva. We'll show you what it's like to live day to day on a narrowboat and we'll arrive in some beautiful places next to the water. We go and explore the areas we've moored at for the night and we'll take you with us. Morning. I've just often walk into the first lock. Um, I'm going to get it open ready for Michael. I've got the walkie-talkie with me um, and I have to say just seeing him come through a bridge and uh, it's one of the benefits of having the walkie-talkies because if one of us off and walking we can just warn of any oncoming obstacles. There's nothing to say that a boat's coming another way. Fortunately Jack's got off with the um, walkie-talkie and told me there's another boat coming so I'm holding up now. Um, you know, even if there's a tree felled or something like that, or lots of boats, moored boats, boats coming towards us. And sometimes you get really, really sharp turns um, going under a bridge. It's always good to have some advance warning of what's coming. It works for us. Before we had our walkie-talkies, <laughs> I used to do a lot of running. I'd have to run back to the lot landing, or walk back to the lot landing walk back up to the lock and there was a lot more uh, lots more leg work lots more steps were being done I just suddenly said to Michael one day I said what about we get some walkie talkies because we'd seen other boaters have them I thought oh that looks really useful oh that might be okay Michael's going I'm not getting them we look ridiculous anyway it was only a couple of weeks later he said to me you know that idea about walkie talkies I said I think it'll be a really good idea so yeah we just got them from um, Amazon works a treat absolute treat and yeah so it stops sort of walking backwards and forwards you can communicate easily when you're both one of you's in the lock on the boat and the other one's at the top and maybe the water's really loud or it's a deep lock um, and you don't want to keep shouting at each other it just sounds ridiculous you're shouting at each other yeah so we decided we'd get them is it a relationship saver well, it could be, couldn't it? So there's a boat just coming out of the lock. Um, I'm not there yet, um, but I'll just walk up to it and see if um, if there's anything gone through the other way. Yes, sir, thank you. So there's nobody gone through the other way in the lock, so it should be okay for us, but I will need to just open the lock gates. Yes, sir, thank you. So I'm just letting a little bit of water out of the lock because it must be leaking at the other end. Um, so it uh, shouldn't be too long. It works. It's good. Okay, both gates open, all yours. And the other benefit, we can chat to each other if we want to, sometimes. We don't want to chat to each other. We just want to be, have a half an hour by ourselves maybe listen to a podcast or just walk, listen to the bird song. If I stand here and show you that, what does that say? That says it's coffee time! Yay! I've got coffee on. Spot the difference. That's Michael's there. So he's got one pod and a cup. I've got three pods and two cups. The coffee machine is about to be deployed so I'm just about to put the coffee machine on so you need to be ready with that throttle. I can always tell when you're making coffee. I know. So walkie 
talkies. Yeah, when we first started, we didn't have these babies. Yeah, I was saying earlier. And, um, you were slightly reluctant, weren't you? Yeah, I was a bit reluctant, yeah. yeah. I just thought we were a bit geeky. But without these, we've got trouble. Yeah, I've got trouble. Because, because if one of you gets off and walks to a lock, then you can tell people, you can tell your steerer, captain, that there's something coming or there's a problem with a lock or whatever. Yeah. It just seems to cut down on arguments, my darling. Well, well no, and the other thing, yes, well, no. It, yes, no, it does, and that's does. what I said, but I also said it cuts down on the amount of walking you've got to do because then if something has happened and you need to communicate it, yeah. I was having, or you were as well, having to walk back to the boat to, yeah. and then you've got to shout to each other because you're in the centre of the canal and obviously then you've got the engine noise so you were shouting all the time and you don't want to see people shouting all the time do you? So they are a marriage saver without a shadow of a doubt. Everybody we've spoken to who has got some of these and that Whatever make there's there's loads of megs out there. Can't remember up to the word. 20, oh, twenty five pounds. Twenty five like pounds, that. yeah. And the range is about five miles currently, but they're brilliant. Yeah. Because it just helps to uh, cut down on the arguments. And therefore, for those of you that might be struggling keeping your wife interested or your husband interested in um, staying on a boat full time or keeping your boat because there's loads of arguments. Twenty five quid. Buy walkie talkies. Job's a good one. Yeah. It'll help. Definitely helped us for sure. Yeah. Meanwhile, lot landing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you see, if you'd have been walking now with your walkie talk, you could have told me. I could, yeah. Right, action stations. So we've just got to that next lock and it's emptying. So I'll we'll see a boat coming down in it. Perfect. So Michael's left me, he's gone to do the lock um, and just spot what I can see now. And we've just we've just been chatting about them. Anyway, what can I say? Sometimes the captain's not always right. So there is two walkie-talkies on the boat, and only me here. Schoolboy error. My husband. Boat coming out quite slowly, but I think it's a single-hander. In fact, I'm absolutely certain he is. So Michael will just be giving him a help. But sadly he can't communicate that with me because he's forgotten the walkie-talkie. Notice a very relaxed style. That's a how to do a lock, Michael style. I can see all the bees going in and out, yeah. We've missed it. Oh, it's part of a piece of the banking. Uh, go through know. that, would you? Oh. And it also stops one half of the marriage, my darling. Um, mm -hmm. saying, scary. Uh, well, I thought you'd have done that, and I thought you would have done this. I thought you would have come into the lot like this, or you would have done that, or you needed to go beyond that. So, because if all that sorted out before, because you've got one of these. No arguments, you see. So, mm -hmm. definite marriage savers. You've got to get one. It's yeah, do it. I agree. Yeah, and I wasn't for it at all, but I am now. Good. In fact, um, one of them ran out, didn't it? It wouldn't work anymore. We were yeah. having a bit of a yeah. stress about it, but yeah. it was just that the battery had been allowed to well, run I, down yeah, for a couple of months. I was trying to communicate with you, and I had to pass a message on to another boater um, oh, who was yeah. coming in your direction and um, to just say, can you tell my husband such and such? Because you ran out of battery. Yeah, 
So she became a married server, or he, whoever it was on they, that boat. They, it was the they. they. Yeah. There was two of them, yep. There you go, you see. Mm. So there you go, married servers. Get one, or get two in fact. Yeah, because they, you do, yeah, one's no good. Yeah, you have to change channels occasionally because you'll hear other people talking on your channel, so we just change channels a bit. But, but it's also you hear some interesting I things say, that I was people just, are saying. I was just about to say you can also tune into other people's conversations. So if you have a nosy persuasion, you can always just leave it on. Listen to what other people are saying. So, <laughs> Listen to other uh, other arguments. <laughs> we didn't yet. Yeah. Well, no, other people um, saving the marriages. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've just come to the bow. It's really shaded here. It's really nice and peaceful. I'm just about to go under a very, very, very beautiful bridge. So I just thought I'd come down and have a proper look at it. Tell me what you want with me. Is it just some rest we need? An escape from the world? Oh, then let's escape the world. Am I in the high Are you bouncing? Up and down, far above ground. Am I in your car? My soul's twisting. So we've just stopped before the lock and we're just deciding whether to moor before or after the lock. Michael's gone ahead with the walkie-talkie this time. We're being joined by somebody. We can move on, there's a spot up here. Okay, we'll do. Do you want to sort the lock out? It's turning, so I'll crack on. So we're going to go through the lock. Michael's just turning it. There is a GRP boat behind, um, but I'll just let him know we're going to go in first. It's quite a deep lock this, nearly uh, 10 foot, and it looks deep, the really tall lock gates. It'd be like going into a, uh, a cavern. Yeah, so he's just gone to moor up on the lock landing as the, the GRP boat, licensed to thrill. I think it's licensed to thrill, it could be licensed to chill actually. Um, so he knows we're going to go through first. So I think there's going to be a lot of water coming out of that lock. I can feel the pull on the rope. Considering that was such a deep lock, it was actually reasonable. Didn't feel that was too bad at all. There is the teeny weeniest little boat here. I mean, you can see it. So cute. Gosh. Teeny weeny. I don't think I've ever seen a small and narrow boat. Absolutely, you get a gold star. Perfect. Thank you. That's got to be the cutest boat I've ever seen. It's Look at that, how cute is that? It's the cutest boat. Look at that. There is our mooring spot. Perfect. Not a bad little mooring this. This is alright, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Quite nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Quite a nice view. With the sounds of the cows. Not a lot else. Oh. 
and there we are in the middle of the English countryside time to get the chairs out have some lunch and uh, relax beautiful What's for lunch? Uh, what's for lunch? Um, well, I'm going to do a little salad, but we've got some um, tuna. Oh no, we've got some mackerel uh, pasta bake uh, from last night. Oh. So I'm just going to um, heat that. No, but <laughs> very, very good. I'm have my pasta cold. Oh, controversial. Well, that's fine. Mm. I'll have mine cold if you and are. And some salad. Yeah. In a bowl. You mean like a poke bowl? Is it poke or poke? Oh, poke. Oh, well, it's poke, darling. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, no, know, I don't know which one it is. Um, yeah. So, oh, it's fine. I'll do that. Yeah, good. That saves me. It's one less pan to wash. It's going away. <laughs> well, I'd be washing anyway. Yeah, we know that's not true, don't we? Well, it's going past Hi. us. Hi. Have you had a look out of there? Yeah. Looks yeah. fab, doesn't it? Mm. It's a view from our duck hatch. Lunch is ready. Which one's mine? Uh, that one. Uh, pasta, some salad, peppers, tomatoes, uh, sun-dried tomatoes, um, feta cheese, a bit of hummus, a bit of carrot and a little bit of dressing. Oh, he's a big boy. It's a big boy. Good grief. Cheers. Cheers, my dear. Cheers, big ears. Nice view. Nice view. pretty is this this morning? Look at this! What a beautiful sight! So I'm doing a little um, fuel um, filter change on the canal line 42 engine that I've got um, I've got a pre-fuel filter which is here and I've also got a main fuel filter uh, I'm going to change both of them today uh, I keep a regular maintenance um, schedule uh, it tells you in the canal line uh, manual how often you should change your filters and you really need to stick to it because if you don't um, you're gonna get caught out but like uh, things like um, diesel bug etc if you've got the pre-fuel filter hopefully that's going to help to stop any problems that you might get in the fuel getting into the engine so I've got a pre-fuel filter and a fuel filter firstly I'm going to change the pre-fuel filter this is what I used this is the pre-fuel filter this is the um, main fuel filter here so I've got a nappy underneath it um, which is always good to stop any drippages I'm going to se just secure um, a bag underneath that so that when I take it off I don't lose any fuel into my bilge and there's the old fuel filter off <laughs> you might wonder why I'm looking so serious I'm doing some video editing <laughs> Michael's um, doing maintenance outside um, well he was doing maintenance now he's chatting with us a boater um, I've heard football mentioned so in the bottom of the fuel filter the old one I took off is a bung which needs to come out I just used a 10 mil allen key remove the bung from the bottom because the new one doesn't come with a bung so now I've got the bung in I've put some of the uh, old fuel around the top of the gasket here so now again I'm just going to spin this one on this is the main fuel filter I don't like a moist bilge some people do I don't and 
There we go, that's nice and hand tight. So that's the fuel cell all changed. Yeah, the canal line engine does have a self bleed facility on it, um, but I like to do it by hand. So yeah, there we go. Uh, time to turn it over and see if it works. So here it goes. See if my hard work has um, paid off. All good, job done. Pre fuel filter and fuel filter done. Sunshine. I've just been doing some video editing while Michael's been uh, taking the boat along the canal. We've just arrived at the uh, lock, so I need to leap into action. Boat coming out, so we can go straight in. All right, Captain, you've got your hat on today. Yeah. You got a bit of heat stroke yesterday, didn't you? You're going. I think a heat stroke. Oh, sunstroke. No, I think either of those two. Oh. Yeah, a bit woozy, don't you? Feel like the sun on the back of your head without that on. Yeah. Woozy is not the same as sunstroke. Oh, no, just okay. Wooziness. Mm. Gonna check out a mooring spot for us. See what I can find. Okay. I can catch you on. Oh, I'm only going slow. That's all right. I'll hover. Hover? That should be interesting. Yeah. I didn't know an arrow boat was coming. Oh. When I'm at the tiller, anything's possible. Just sat at the um, locking stone, having a bit of a, a drink, a cold drink, and um, just met a couple of our subscribers on the uh, boat here, coming up in the lock, Wyona. And we've had to go and help them with the lock gates, because these lock gates here are absolutely dreadful so I'm just hoping when we come through in the next couple of days there's somebody there to help us. You remember those gates last time we came through? Yeah, they were dreadful. Um, there's absolutely no way if two people came, I don't have a single ladder does it, but if you came through here um, and you didn't have more than two people you've got no chance. No. Um, fortunately it's a busy thoroughfare but you can't, this um, gate on our side, you can't, physically one person can't close it so just as well people sit here and everybody's willing to join in. Oh my good grief. That's a boat. It's a boat winding. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe, it really helps us. Side side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun.